Hey y'all, and welcome to Flick Connection, where in less time than you normally spend scrolling for something to watch every night, I'm gonna help you fill your queue with 20 underrated and overlooked movies you can currently catch on Netflix. And this is an eclectic list with 20 titles. We've got a bunch of action, some killer thrillers, a couple of really underrated war movies, and some unusual picks in the mix as well. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but let's go ahead and get started with my number 20 pick, which is kind of a weird one, starring Henry Rollins in He Never Died. Now, fans of Henry Rollins, this is gonna be a must watch. It's one of the coolest little leading roles he's ever had. But even if you're not a fan of Henry Rollins, and even if you don't even know who he is, I would say this movie will definitely appeal to fans of the series Supernatural, as it is sort of a dark supernatural thriller, but it's set in present day. It's got a bunch of mythical and religious elements to it, but it is a dark, almost horror movie, yet it's not really scary. It's just an interesting concept with a pretty cool leading role from Henry Rollins. What, what did I tell you? Let me die! It's a weird one though, it's super low budget. If you're not into the way I've described it, this is not one I strongly recommend for large groups of people, but if it sounds like you, definitely check it out. My number 19 pick, I think was pretty damn close to being a top notch movie. It just fell short in a few areas, but in general, you've got a killer cast and a pretty dynamite story in The Informer. And by cast, you've got Joe Kinnaman in the lead role. Roseman Pike plays a pretty killer role here. Common has a pretty meaty role. And then Ana de Armas, who's huge now. They filmed this really before she was famous and she's got a pretty puny role in it. Oh, and I forgot about Clive Owen being in the movie. But even though all those folks are in it, this movie kind of punches below its weight. It's got a good look to it. It's got an interesting setup. And again, that cast, but it falls a little bit short of what you might expect, which is why it's my number 19 pick. However, with the right expectations, this is a pretty dynamite thriller. If it had had a smaller cast, maybe even if it had been done on a lower budget, this could have potentially been a real surprise of a movie. Okay, my next pick is a drama that takes place in sort of a high pressure kitchen, but it's from Thailand. Don't worry though, if you don't like subtitles, they do have a very good dubbed version on Netflix. It's titled Hunger. Now, if you're into sort of high-end food, cooking shows, anything of that sort, Hunger is gonna be right up your alley. It's a high drama movie that actually feels a bit more like the setup of a series. Speaking of series, if you're into The Bear on FX, then Hunger would make kind of a great companion to that. I mean, the setup for this is somewhat like Whiplash, except it takes place in a very, very high-end kitchen. The chef's brutal, the work is grueling, and it all makes for a very interesting Netflix original movie. All right, next up, I've got a big budget action movie that did come out in theaters years back and I think was just kind of criminally underrated then and definitely underrated now, Eagle Eye. This stars Shia LaBeouf and Michelle Monaghan, easily one of the cutest women in Hollywood. And in this movie, Shia LaBeouf plays kind of a regular guy who begins to get these messages from some sort of agency warning him of different dangers, some of them huge dangers, and they sort of go on the run together under the direction of this eagle eye voice. What's cool about Eagle Eye is it feels even more relevant today as we're entering the dawn of AI. All of the themes here, they still work and are maybe more relevant in 2024 than they were back when this movie released. All right, next up, I've got kind of a fresh take on the gangster movie genre and it comes from Poland and it's a pretty epic movie as well. It's a Netflix original titled Furiosa. Now, the original language for this is Polish, but you can watch a very good dubbed version on Netflix, again, if you don't do the subtitles. But this is for gangster movie lovers. I think if you don't generally like that genre, you may be a little bit lost as to what's going on here, mainly because it's a bit of a slow-paced gangster movie, meaning you kind of have to be into watching gangster dudes live the gangster lifestyle. In addition to that, though, 
it feels very different from any other gangster movie, mainly because of the way that they, I guess, operate in Poland. Honestly, this felt a lot more like Point Break to me, just not crazy and over the top. It felt much more grounded and realistic. But that really just sort of comes from the way that the gangs operate. They feel much more like Bodie's gang in Point Break than they do traditional, I guess, American gangs. There are a bunch of wild boys getting up to some wild stuff. If that sounds like you, check this movie out. But if not, I'm not sure there's enough with the story to really engage anyone else here. But my number 15 pick, I think, is one of, if not the, most underrated modern warfare movie released in the past decade. It's titled The Outpost. Now this one takes place in Afghanistan and actually features a relatively small outpost that gets heavily, heavily outnumbered by the Taliban. Not only that, but their position is not ideal, and so you do get a lot of action with this movie, but The Outpost doesn't depict this one major incursion that is a true story. It also features kind of a life of living on an outpost like this, and so you get quite a bit more story than just this one major battle. That said, the first half of the movie can seem a little bit slow paced, so you do need to be into this modern warfare genre, I think, to really enjoy the movie, but it's filled with a bunch of great actors that are doing really respectful work, kind of, you know, respecting the true story here, and is ultimately a really killer modern warfare flick, and I'm honestly surprised this was not a bigger hit when it was released. I could say the same thing about my number 14 pick, which does have some major stars in it, Russell Crowe being the lead, but this thriller just for some reason was overlooked in theaters and is still criminally overlooked today the next three days. Now, in this movie, his wife is wrongfully convicted and put in prison. She's played by Elizabeth Banks, and all the setup for that is believable enough. There's some far-fetched stuff, but it works for the setup of the movie. Ultimately, he decides he needs to break her out. Now, again, all of the setup actually makes sense. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it gets you there. It's, it gets you invested into the movie, and essentially, what that sets up is a very ordinary man trying to figure out how to break into this prison, and I find it all fascinating. This is actually from the same director as the Academy Award-winning movie Crash, and I think this tops Crash in terms of directing. I think he did a dynamite job with this flick. It's exciting from beginning to end, and even though the climax goes a little bit too Hollywood for my taste, it's still really thrilling, but more importantly, everything leading up to that on screen isn't that dynamic, this movie is not packed with action, yet it's edge of your seat stuff and it's mainly because of that killer setup. Okay, my next pick is kind of a gangster movie, but it's got a very different twist, in fact kind of a Hitchcockian twist, an eye for an eye. Now this comes from Spain, it's got some great Spanish actors including Luis Tozar, I love him. He's in another movie on this list that's absolutely killer. But in this movie he actually plays a nurse or caretaker at an old folks facility. I don't know what they call them in Spain, but one day this elderly gangster gets wheeled in, a gangster responsible for destroying this man's life, and he decides to take out revenge on him, yet he's this guy's nurse. He can do almost anything he wants to him, and it goes to some twisted places. Now, this is not an overly upsetting movie. It does have some dark elements, but it's not going to turn your stomachs or anything too bad like that. But it's a very different perspective on the gangster movie genre, meaning the main character is this nurse who has really no connection to this crime family other than the fact that they somehow destroyed his life. It's really slick stuff. If you like sort of Hitchcock style thrillers, Eye for an Eye is a top notch one. And again, if you don't do subtitles, there's a pretty decent, I say decent on this one, dubbed version. And as I was going through the list, I didn't realize the other movie that features Louis Tozar is my next pick. It's titled Toro. Now, Mario Casas stars in this, and he's in a bunch of fantastic movies. In fact, you wanna go down a Spanish movie rabbit hole on Netflix, watch almost anything starring those two guys and you're gonna love it. This being one of my personal favorites. This too is a gangster flick, but it has quite a bit more action than you would expect. You follow the main character here who is in a real tight spot and needs to come up with a bunch of money. Kind of a typical setup, but he goes on a wild ride in Toro and I absolutely loved it. There's some 
great sequences in this movie. It's got a fantastic look to it. I mean, it's kind of a classic action-packed thriller, but it's one that I know a lot of you haven't seen, and it's top shelf stuff. If that's what you're in the mood for one night, definitely watch Toro. It too has a good English dub on it. I keep saying that because there are a couple of really excellent foreign flicks on this list that do not have that English dub, so I kind of want to point them out when they're available. In fact, just looking at the list, there are three foreign films on this list that you will have to read subtitles for, but my next one is another one from Spain, and it also has a good English dub. It too feels a lot like a Hitchcock flick. It's titled The Occupant. This one stars Mario Casas as well, actually, but it also stars Javier Gutierrez, another Spanish actor who's got a handful of really fantastic flicks on Netflix right now. So he's another actor you could be on the lookout for. I've loved almost anything I've seen him in. But in The Occupant, he plays sort of this high-powered marketing executive who loses his job, then loses his family, and desperately sort of covets to be back in his home with his family. He then becomes obsessed with the family that moves in to his previous home. He inserts himself into their lives in this really sort of creepy, manipulative way, and it's dark stuff. Again, not stomach turning and really off-putting. I say that because I do recommend some really nasty movies like that. This isn't one, but it does go to some dark, twisted places, and they do a lot of things that you're not going to expect in this one. Another one, if you like Hitchcock-style thrillers, I highly recommend The Occupant. Now, something else I recommend as much as these movies is today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, if you're going to take advice like this from anyone, you might as well take it from someone who literally figured out how to watch movies for a living. I mean, when I became a full-time YouTuber, I knew nothing about video production, meaning I'm completely self-taught with most things I need to be a full-time YouTuber. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes from professionals in studies like film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and a lot more. Skillshare has curated high quality content like these learning paths for creative pros. This one in particular just caught my eye on creative productivity. It's got a bunch of courses on things I never would have pursued on my own, but it all looks like stuff that would help me run my business better. And because their content's curated, it helps you know where to start, stay on task, and then when you finish, you actually feel like you completed something. Personally, I'm wanting to get faster and faster with my video editing so I can create more content. So I'm currently taking some classes on that just for more speed. Skillshare even has a class on the AI tool Midjourney, which is what I've been using to help me design some of these t-shirts. So I'll be brushing up on those skills next. If you want to invest in yourself this year and focus on some goals related to your career or just expanding your skills or abilities, I highly recommend Skillshare. And for a limited time, the first 500 viewers that go to my link in the video description are gonna get one full free month of Skillshare so you can start learning right away without having to pay a dime. So if you want to improve your career at all, whether it be changing career paths completely or just improving your current set of skills to maybe reach a little bit higher this year, I highly recommend Skillshare. Again, the first 500 viewers that go to my link in the description are going to get a full free month of Skillshare to get started. But speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. If you've already burned through all three original John Wick movies on Netflix, they're included, at least they are here in the U.S right now, then I also recommend The Man From Nowhere. This is an action movie from South Korea that pairs nicely with John Wick. Here you follow kind of a nameless man who begins to befriend this very young girl, and trust me, there's nothing really inappropriate about the setup for this movie. And then when something happens to her, he cuts off all his hair and goes on the warpath. The setup is something you've seen in movies before, but The Man From Nowhere is excellent. The fight choreography is top notch, it's slick, it's stylish, while also feeling just grounded enough to feel like it could actually be happening. You don't have to suspend too much disbelief for this one, and you still get this wild martial arts movie that also has kind of 
some tenderness and some heart to it, a little more than you might expect from a flick like this. But it is one of the few movies on this list that doesn't have a good English dub, so you will need to read subtitles for this one. But there's a lot more ass kicking in this movie than there is dialogue. All right, I've got another gangster movie, but listen up because this one's very different from any gangster movie you have ever seen. And I can guarantee a lot of you haven't seen it yet because they just added it to Netflix the day I'm releasing this video. It's titled Arkansas. Would either of you boys like to call me sir? You can if you want. I won't think it's corny. We're gonna go traffic drugs across state lines, sir. In this movie, Vince Vaughn plays a Southern gangster and man, does he do a good job with this movie. He is the main reason to check this movie out, but one of the main characters is played by Liam Hemsworth. He's fantastic in this movie. John Malkovich is great. Michael Kenneth Williams, it's one of his last roles before he died. And then Clark Duke has kind of a silly role in the movie, but he actually wrote and directed this thing. And it's his first big movie. And I thought he did a killer job. The movie's got a fair amount of levity. It's funny at times, but it's also kind of this cool southern gangster movie that just feels very different from any other gangster movie I've seen and longtime subscribers know it's like my favorite genre. So the movie gets big points just for having that different flavor, but then to also get this killer role from Vince Vaughn, it's top-notch stuff. Generally, if you love my recommendations, especially when I gush about movies like this, make Arkansas the first thing you watch off of this list. In fact, even if you don't have time to watch it, do me a favor and let it play on Netflix the next time you get a chance sometime soon, and let's see if we can't get that movie to show up in the top 10. Now, my number eight pick is a foreign flick without any dubbing. You will have to read subtitles, but this movie comes from Iran, or rather, takes place in Iran and holds up a lens to what life is like there, particularly for women, and it's disturbing stuff. Not only does this movie depict life for women in Iran uh, as being just, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but the movie itself actually focuses on a serial killer. And what's so disturbing about Holy Spider is the fact that this serial killer was really allowed to continue to perpetrate these crimes. And yes, this is based on a true story, uh, mainly because no one really cared in Iran if someone was killing prostitutes. And just for clarification, this takes place in modern day. You know, I mean, the last time you heard of anything like that was like Jack the Ripper days. Yet this is recent history in Iran. This is like the last 10 years and it's creepy, creepy stuff. But the movie is so well done, well acted, the cinematography is incredible, and it's got this dark, creepy mood. This one does go to some stomach-turning places, but it's also, I think, kind of an important flick. All right, my number seven pick is the last one without any subtitles. It's also from South Korea, but it's it just one of the coolest cop movies I've seen in a long time. It's titled Veteran. Now, yes, technically this is kind of a gangster movie too, because there's some gangster guys doing some gangster shit in it, but you really do follow this one cop and he's a cool character. He has a little fun with his job, yet he also takes it very seriously. So he's very entertaining to watch, even if you're having to read subtitles. The villain is also absolutely incredible. He's a little bit over the top. They're both chewing the scenery just a little bit and it makes it oh so entertaining. On top of that, there's some really fun, fast-paced action in it that feels realistic, that feels like something from 90s action movies, like Lethal Weapon or something like that, rather than these big overblown things that we're getting out of the US today. Veteran feels a little dated, but in, in a real sweet, perfect kind of way. Now, if you've been watching the show for a while, you know I'm a big fan of the Raid movies, the Raid Redemption and the Raid 2, both available on Netflix right now, and I highly, highly recommend them. In fact, the Raid 2, one of my favorite gangster movies from the 21st century, and easily one of my favorite action movies from the 21st century. I say all of that to say that there is another movie that got criminally overlooked on Netflix, has some of the same stars and similar fight choreography. It's titled Headshot. Now there's a fourth recommendation titled The Night Comes For Us. That's a Netflix original. I also highly recommend that, but man, Headshot's a brutal one. If you love over the top action movies and don't mind some gore, Headshot is a wild ride. 
In fact, it can make movies like Terminator look like a kid's movie, honestly. The violence is so brutal in Headshot. I mean, it's horror movie style makeup that they're employing to show some of the gore, and it's just absolutely savage. Now, if that doesn't sound like you, if you can't handle a lot of blood, steer far clear of Headshot. But if you do decide to watch this one, strap in for a, again, just absolutely brutal ride. Now, my number five pick is probably one of the most well-known movies on this list, but I bet a lot of you didn't even know it was on Netflix because for some reason they have just buried it. The original Death Wish. Now, this is easily one of Charles Bronson's most famous movies. Not saying it's his best, but the setup here is his wife and daughter are brutally raped, and yes, they do show it, and yes, it's perpetrated by none other than Jeff Goldblum in this movie, being really one of his first roles. And like any father or husband would want to do, he takes out revenge. Yet, Death Wish, for an older movie like this, it feels very realistic. It takes him a while to come around to it, it takes him a while to acquire a gun, it takes him a while to sort of muster up the strength to go out and do something about it, but what he does is, he doesn't really go out for revenge, he just goes out in the street and kills anybody who seems like they might be a criminal, yet this movie works really well. They ended up making a whole series of them, and I'm honestly not really that big a fan of the sequels. I know some people like them. I feel like they just get kind of gratuitous, whereas the first one feels like a fairly grounded story, and it's got a fantastic ending. I just, it's well-rounded. I like it. Just keep in mind, you do have to watch Jared Goldblum just, like, really do some awful stuff to some women in this movie. But then my number four pick is another one of Vince Vaughn's best things from the past few years. It's titled Dragged Across Concrete. single red ant could have eaten it faster. Now Mel Gibson also stars in this, but this is from the same director as Bone Tomahawk and Brawl and Cell Block 99, which is coming to Netflix next week if you watch this right when I released it. Speaking of which, it's as good a time as any to mention if that subscribe button is red, it means you haven't clicked it yet. If you watch the video this long, or especially if this is not your first time seeing me and you haven't subscribed yet, you might as well consider doing it. It'll make it more likely for you to see my content in the future. Same goes for likes and comments. It just tells the algorithm that you maybe want to engage with my content again in the future. That said though, Dragged Across Concrete is this director's slowest paced movie, but I find it to be really interesting. It's a little bit long winded, but it never goes into a direction you're going to expect. To me, his work feels a lot like Quentin Tarantino yet more grounded and realistic, meaning their dialogue's not kind of over the top and the setting and everything doesn't look hyper real the way Tarantino movies do, yet it's got sort of a similar vibe to it that I find totally cool, yet it feels unique unto itself. However, I wouldn't really recommend this be your first movie from this director. Bone Tomahawk or Brawl and Cell Block 99 might be a better place to start because of the slower pace of this one, but I think if you like either of those two movies, you will love Dragged Across Concrete. We have the skills and the right to acquire proper compensation. Now, the Safdie brothers became huge stars when Martin Scorsese produced Uncut Gems. That movie got all sorts of acclaim, and I do love the nature of that movie. It's got this fast-paced feel, and I think it's kind of a masterpiece, especially for very young directors. Just before that, though, they directed a really slick thriller starring Robert Pattinson titled Good Time. Pattinson is amazing in this movie. If you're even just remotely a fan of his in any sort of way, even if you didn't really like him until he became Batman, I'm telling you, you need to see Good Time. Not only is he great, the movie's got an amazing slick look to it. I mean, just the filmmaking style that they have with Uncut Gems and Good Time is, is unparalleled. It's slick. The music and the atmosphere is all just oozes this really cool neon vibe. And then the story itself is this wild, crazy night where you really cannot predict what's about to happen next. I absolutely love this flick. It does drag a little bit. It's got some slow scenes to it, but I still find the entire atmosphere they built so cool. 
and the fact that I never really knew what was about to happen totally surprised me, which is why this flick is ranked so high on this particular list. A list full of bangers, if I'm being honest. In fact, to just go ahead and cement that sentiment here, my number two pick comes from one of the greatest directors of all time, Francis Ford Coppola, and I think it's one of his most underrated movies of all time, The Conversation. Now, he actually released this between The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two, which is maybe kind of why this one got overshadowed. Gene Hackman plays a surveillance expert. He's very good at bugging people, reading lips, all of that sort of stuff covertly. And Coppola did an amazing job of showing you all the tools of the trade for this job with very little exposition. Most of it, you just see him acting out his duties quietly and silently. But the story here is he begins to get wrapped up in the lives of some people he's surveying and that's a bad idea. Things go into a twisted direction, yet the story works really well here. Netflix has kind of come around and been adding more and more classic movies. They used to not really have much from the 70s or 60s. I don't know why. This being kind of one of my favorites from that era currently on the platform. And then my number one pick is a massive cult classic. There's no doubt a lot of you watching have seen it and love it, but it made my number one spot because a lot of people still don't know how amazing this movie actually is. The original Old Boy. I also happen to know that Netflix doesn't really push this movie nearly as much as they should. This being one of the most internationally famous movies released from South Korea. Spike Lee actually directed an American remake starring Josh Brolin that I thought was horrendous. I thought it was a really awful movie despite the fact that I like a lot of people involved with it. But the original is just an unparalleled experience that I cannot recommend enough. The basic setup here is you follow a man who is in prison, yet it's not any prison. This appears to be a very private prison. In fact, it looks like a motel room, and he's in there for a very, very long time. The movie does an amazing job of depicting what his life is like in this little motel room. And then when he eventually escapes, and it's quite a ways into the movie when he does, uh, <laughs> the movie takes a turn and it becomes something else entirely. He begins investigating, trying to figure out who put him in this place, and he doesn't go out for your ordinary sort of revenge. Not only that, but the directing here is just nothing short of amazing. There's so many sequences, including a very famous fight scene in a hallway that are just shot in ways that you wouldn't expect. So this story does things you won't expect, the filmmaking does lots of things you won't expect, and it's all glued together perfectly, culminating in a pretty amazing, if not disturbing, ending. Add it to your queue. Don't forget to go check out that Skillshare link in the video description to get that free month. But I will keep making these videos as long as y'all keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode, and you will see me on the next one.